It's Wednesday, the 21st day of February, 2024. This podcast brought to you by Hot Springs County Travel and Tourism. Head to Thermopolis to get in some hot water to swim, soak, and slide. Check them out at thermopolis.com. Well, it's going to be about Pacific moisture moving through, as we have been mentioning over the last couple of days. It's Interstate 80 across Nevada, California, and Utah into Wyoming. We're going to see the wetness, the snow, and the most unsettled weather today, tonight, and early tomorrow in that area. There's going to be travel concerns. Elsewhere, north and south of Interstate 80, we really don't see much going on. There's going to be snow between I-70 and I-80 in northern Colorado. This means more mountain snow to help out the snowpack in many areas. We're only going to be a little cooler behind the system since it's a Pacific system. We're bringing air in off the west coast, so it's not cold. It's not winter cold, that's why it's been so mild. And as we go into the weekend, it's gonna be a quiet weekend. However, when we start looking further down the road, we see changes starting with a strong cold front coming out of Western Canada into the Pacific Northwest and Northern then Central Rockies in the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday timeframe of next week. It's gonna be a pretty decent shot of cold air. So this little spring pattern that we're enjoying right now doesn't necessarily mean spring is starting. On the contrary, our long-term trends looking out to the next four weeks or so indicate a, a pattern change to colder, more stormy weather for the beginning of March. And we'll show you why we're thinking of that. But first of all, let's look at a pretty photo of blue skies and snow on the mountains from the White Pine Ski Area near Pinedale. We're looking at uh, a lot of scenes like this, especially this weekend because of fresh mountain snow and a quiet high pressure dominated weekend. But first we've got to get through this. It's looking rather disorganized now, but a good plume of moisture here, here and here coming on through the area with a fragmented area of low pressure now coming across and going right down the Interstate 80 corridor. And radar this morning is showing patches of rain and snow out ahead of it, still raining in Southern California, where they just picked up a bunch more rain. Then we look at where we are with advisories. So you can see the Evanston area, the northern parts of Utah, then the I-80 corridor area, big surprise, right? Between Rollins and Laramie, where the interstate gets up very high. These are gonna be the two travel areas that are gonna be a headache. That's not to say this stretch, okay, right here, is gonna be a problem as well as right here as well. There'll, there'll be some travel hazards there, but certainly picking on Interstate 80, and here's why. We showed you this yesterday. The deep, precipitable water goes right through. Then you can see the brown. That's the drier air that comes in behind it, setting the stage for the more quiet weekend of weather in the interior west as it comes on through. So here's your 500 millibar chart today. Disorganized area of low pressure. This guy hangs back to feed more moisture into the west coast this weekend. But once this moves through, we get into the weekend and a little bit of high pressure comes in and we're back to mild Pacific flow. Now, it is going to probably be a little on the windy side this weekend because the jet stream winds will be perpendicular to the Cottonelle Divide. So we'll deal with a little bit of wind, but it's generally going to be mild. Notice up north, though, notice we're getting a larger area of blue and gray up here in the higher latitudes. So we're getting sort of a consolidation of a pretty big pool of cold air again. It's not so fragmented, kind of getting itself better organized. And this is going to lead up to what we're going to talk about in the long term. This is the precipitation forecast through Friday morning. So you can see that fetch going just like what we've been showing you over the last couple of days. And this is what the snowfall looks like. And to focus in closer, you'll see that the Wasatch Front, the Uintas, the northern mountains of Colorado and southern Wyoming, this area right here, more snow for the Sierras. And then focusing in again into Wyoming and northern Colorado, you can see where the heavier pockets of snow are going to be falling. So Albany, Carbon County into Sweetwater and Uinta counties, Lincoln County, Wyoming, then along and north of I-70 into Colorado. Then we go out further. So what this is for is Tuesday morning. Notice this area, blue and gray, still well kind of put together. And this is part of that strong jet stream pattern that we were talking about that was going to go across the Pacific. Well, here it comes. It starts to arrive with the first wave coming off the North Pacific, really coming really right off the Aleutians, 
comes crashing into Montana, the Pacific Northwest. You know, we really haven't seen one of these this winter. I'm trying to remember, but this is kind of a classic winter frontal system trough coming on in. So it's going to usher in and allow the door to open to much colder temperatures. Then this will allow a big warm up to take place in the Midwest and the East while the colder weather slides into the West with this arrow representing the trajectory of the colder air coming right out of Alaska into British Columbia and Alberta. Then it's going to just slide into the West and you can really see that here's the, the front by Wednesday morning and next week. You can see that sharp contrast. But you can see the much, much colder air is going to protrude and come into the interior west, the northern plains, all of central and western Canada. This is a pretty large area of colder air that will get brought in. This is the four-day period of Monday through Thursday. So this wave is going to be pretty productive. It will be another good producer of snow in the mountains. This is a great pattern for the bighorns. The bighorns, you're going to get a really nice sh shot of snow from late Sunday night through Tuesday. Another really nice shot of snow for Jackson, the Yellowstone Plateau, the Northwest Mountains of Utah and Idaho that really need the snow, you're gonna get it. Snow will be going out across the plains, even back down into Arizona. So while we do have a break in the weather this weekend, we get right back at it by early next week. And that's the four day snowfall total. And you can see snowfall getting further south and east into that colder air as it advances south and east. Then that'll be followed by the weekend after. So as we get into the weekend of the second and third, here comes the next wave. And that's what this strong jet stream pattern is going to do. It's going to produce these waves coming in out of the Gulf of Alaska into the western United States. So as we get into, let's say, the, the third through the sixth of March, this system is likely going to form a more organized storm right there. And that's something that we're going to keep an eye on between, let's say, the 4th and the 6th, 7th of March, somewhere around there. We'll need to keep an eye on this potentially becoming a larger organized storm in the High Plains and the Central Rockies. Again, that's pretty far down the road, so we're sticking our neck out a bit, but we're going to certainly keep an eye on it for you. Some other long term signals that hint that March is going to start at least start colder and stormy. We have another stratospheric warming event really matures by next weekend. A stratospheric warming event in the high latitudes pushes the colder air from the higher latitudes to the lower latitudes. So that's a cold signal. Cold signal number one. Cold signal number two is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. This is going out pretty far. This goes all the way out here to uh, a period of time into March. And what we can see here is that we see a, a pattern over the next 45 days. This goes out all the way to 45 days. Here's our warm pattern right now with the Eastern Pacific Oscillation being into a warmer phase. But notice we start to see this green line and these blue lines really start to go negative. They go below this, this zero mark as we get into early to mid next week and beyond. So this stretch of weather right here goes into the first three weeks of March, right there. The first three weeks of March, the average of the Eastern Pacific Oscillation is a negative phase. That's cold signal number two. Cold signal number three is the Arctic Oscillation. The Arctic Oscillation goes into negative territory right around or just after the first of March. Cold signal number three. All three of these signals, they are not temporary. That's a three week period. This is generally a three week period right here. And when you have a stratospheric warming event, this does affect temperatures for multiple weeks. So we have larger term signals, regardless of what some computer model might say in long term, that are hinting at a colder, more active pattern for the month of March, at least for the first three weeks of the month. Something we'll keep an eye on. Have a good Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow.